give a brief follow-up As promised, as Speaker of this Honorable House, I note the public commentary in some quarters regarding the role of the Speaker in tabling certain documents and the role of Parliament in addressing these matters. There is an untrue narrative of deliberate delay in tabling reports sent to this house. The fact is, there are no reports, not one report, either from the Integrity Commission or the Auditor General's Department, which have not been tabled. Additionally, all reports were tabled as prescribed at the soonest possible time. My predecessor made certain pronouncements on the tabling of reports from the Integrity Commission and the Auditor General's Department for public bodies, which, as Speaker, I have reviewed and must address. It is expected as legislators, we should have a sound understanding of the law as it is us who craft, debate, and pass the laws which govern us. It is also my understanding that when the court is interpreting the law, the very court may review the records of Hansard to see what the intention of the parliament was at the time of enactment and amendment. Honorable, honorable members, I did a comprehensive review of the correspondence, had extensive discussions with the clerk of the houses, consulted with the chief parliamentary council and speakers from other Commonwealth jurisdictions. It must be made clear that the advice received is not instruction. It is meant to guide the decisions of the House and meant to inform the actions of the Speaker. Therefore, the opinion or advice doesn't absolve the speaker or the house from a duty to clearly understand the legislation and the standing orders in a manner that is consistent with its own legislative jurisdiction and wisdom. The opinion of the Parliamentary Legal Council, which considered all correspondence between the Parliament and the Attorney General and the Auditor General is available for your perusal. Members, based on some utterances, there seems to be a clear misunderstanding of the legislation in respect of the distinction between ministries, departments, and agencies versus public bodies. It is important that it is understood that the entities are different. For our benefit, here are some of the key differences. While the Auditor General is mandated by legislation and the Constitution so mandates that the Auditor General audits central government, which include MDAs, public bodies by law engage their own auditor. 
the Attorney General, while being the chief legal advisor to the government, for public bodies, they engage their own attorneys. Similarly, it is important to note public bodies do not report to permanent secretaries in ministries as obtains or applies for ministries, department, and agencies. Instead, public bodies have their own CEO and a board which manages these entities and report directly to the responsible minister. I do hope this provides some clarity. The ruling is as follows. Re reports from the Integrity Commission. It is my considered view that reports submitted to the Parliament under Section 36 and 54 of the Integrity Commission Act should be treated as indicated here. A, a report made on the request of the House of Parliament under Section 36.1. This report will be tabled as soon as possible as the nature of the report is that it's a request from the Houses of Parliament. It will require the quick action of the members of the House of Representatives once it is submitted for tabling. After it is tabled, it is then to be directed to the attention of the Integrity Commission Oversight Committee in keeping with the Standing Orders 73DE. Re-annual reports submitted under Section 36.2. Once the report is submitted to Parliament, it will be sent to the Integrity Commission Oversight Committee for consideration and report. Once the committee has completed its deliberation, both the reports of the committee and the relevant report from the Integrity Commission will be tabled thereafter. Special reports submitted under 36.3 will be treated in the same manner as a report under 36.2, referenced above. Reports of the Director of Investigations submitted under Section 54.4 will be tabled as soon as possible after receipt by the Parliament, having regard to the serious nature of the matters that are contained therein. It will require the immediate and direct attention of the House. After it is tabled, it will then be submitted to the Integrity Commission Oversight Committee for their consideration and report. Kindly note, all reports from the Integrity Commission will be reviewed by the officers before they are tabled and it will be tabled in the soonest possible time. No effort will be made to delay such reports. The ruling re-reports from the Auditor General Department on Public Bodies. Ruling is as follows. Reports from the Auditor General's Department on Public Bodies will be tabled in keeping with the Public Bodies, Bodies Management and Administration Act enacted 2001 under Section 13A and or Section 30 of the Financial Administration and Audit Act. Particularly of interest is its amendment in 1992, 
which recognize public bodies. Such reports must be submitted in keeping with the procedure outlined therein and also provided in Section 13B of the Public Bodies Management and Accountability Act and Sections 31 of the Financial Administration and Audit Act. Members, the discussions in this Honorable House underscore the need for consistent assessment of legislations with a view to amending where necessary, where clarity is further required. Also, it is critical for the Standing Orders Committee to undertake a comprehensive review of these standing orders with a view to making the suggested amendment for debate and approval by this House to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of written rules. Members, I think that the rules which govern us are within our purview to amend as a parliament as we see fit so that we are all clear in respect of the understanding thereof. I have made available copies which will be sent around in respect of the opinion given. Speaker, thank you. I am seeking clarity on a couple of matters. First, you indicated that the officers would review reports from the Integrity Commission. Could you indicate who those officers are and what the purpose of the review would be before the reports are tabled? That's first. Secondly, you said annual reports would be sent to the Oversight Committee and special investigative reports before they are tabled. I'd like to understand the rationale for that vis-a-vis um, -vis other reports from the Integrity Commission, which would be sent directly to the Speaker and be tabled. I, my understanding of the role of the Oversight Committee is that the Oversight Committee would have it would be outside the scope of the Oversight Committee to opine on an annual report or even a special investigative report. So I'm trying to understand what the rationale is for sending it there first before it is stable here. Those are my questions, preliminary. Uh, Madam Speaker, further to the questions asked by the member from Southeast St. Andrew. My understanding is that committees of parliament act on behalf of the full house. So matters that are referred to the house, matters that comes to the house and is referred to the committee, that committee acts on behalf of the house. If the house does not know what the committee is acting on on its behalf, it seems a little bit, you know, not clear. In other words, a committee of this house, the oversight committee, the integrity oversight committee, for example, gets a report that is sent to the house. Not sent to the committee, sent to the house. The house does not know, meaning us, the members, do not know the contents of that report for which the committee will be acting on. So if you could give me some clarification on that. Madam Speaker, just one clarification, because I understand you to be saying that the report will go to the committee, the oversight committee, but the operations of this oversight committee is public. The media is here, so they will be, the media will be exposed 
to those reports even before the members here. So I just want to see if we could clarify that aspect. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, in addition to the questions that are being asked, Madam Speaker, I, I needed a little clarity myself, to just be clear. So let's say, for example, the, a special report is tabled on the matter that the country is waiting to hear, the illicit six. Um, that would come to the House and go order straight or, to no. the... On a point of order, I do not know of what you're speaking, member. It's a... Mm -hmm. I don't know, no. Please, please, please remove that comment. Please remove that comment. That comment is inappropriate, doesn't belong in the House, and is not included in any document submitted in this Honourable House. Please remove I, I, your comment. I've, I've heard what you have said, Madam Speaker. And Hansard, please that, strike the comment. So let's say, let's say a, special, a special report comes to the House, Madam Speaker. It, it comes to the Speaker, as you have said, it would go directly to the Integrity Oversight um, Committee. The question that I'm asking is when we had the issue about when we had the issue with the speaker, former speaker of the house, the issue about conflict of interest arose. And there was a concern about individuals being on a committee who are subject of the report of the committee. I'm trying to figure out how one would be able to identify whether or not there would be any conflict of interest on, of, of the members who are part of the oversight committee and how that would be dealt with. I'm also wondering... No, I, I don't think I will be able, if I have so many questions at the same time, remember them all to respond. I'm hoping so I'm going to ask you to hold, I'm going to commence responding, okay. and then I'll ask you to continue. Thank you. Um, I'm going to answer your question first. I don't know that you have read or listened to the ruling. Reports submitted in the way you have asked are reports under Section 54. And Section 54 has those reports being tabled first in the Parliament at the soonest possible time and then subsequently sent to committee. The rulings, as you have heard them today, is based on, let me repeat, the Act, Integrity Commission Act, the FAA Act, the Public Bodies Management and Accountability Act, the Standing Orders, and a comprehensive review of all, including the opinions submitted from the Attorney General's Chamber, the Parliamentary Legal Council. In respect of who will read the report, I do not recall your second two questions. I, after, I, I, I indicated to the Parliament before, and I hold that view. The officer reading the report would be the speaker, as in the case of the lower house, or the president in the case of the upper house. The intent is not to read for any purpose, more than to appreciate what it is that you are signing to be tabled in parliament. Every single thing that is on the agenda for parliament, every item, every question asked, every bill, every motion, Every single thing that is placed on the agenda, the speaker in the case of the lower house and the president in the case of the upper house is required to appreciate that they are placing on the agenda. No, so, so there's nothing that the speaker or the president can do with the report. But, and there's, there, and in some cases, there are other things on the agenda that the speaker or president have the ability 
to make amendments on. What is required is that as presiding officers, we follow the law, we obey the law. Now, I will not get into the discussions about media and at what point who have. What I would like to make absolutely clear is that the standing orders and the laws guide us. And therefore, the comment I made in terms of us as a parliament feeling that the legislation needs amendments, the standing orders need amendments, it is us who are required to do that work. The, op the, the opinion I formed was a strongly formed one because it was supported in every way by the Attorney General's Chamber and the Parliamentary Council, Legal Council as well. I do not know if there are any other. Speaker, I had asked three sets of questions. The, I, uh, I answered the first, right. so I'll get to the next one. I please. asked what is the rationale for sending the annual reports and the special investigative reports to the committee before they are tabled in the House? You may, take your, like you may take your seat, member. The rationale is it is the law and the standing orders. So the rationale is obeying what the instructions are in the law for the mechanism to be used by the parliament. I read it. So please read section 36.1. Yes, section 36.2, section 36.3, and 54. And I will also share the legal opinion. Um, I cannot share what I have not, I have not read or appreciated. Um, Member Hannah? Um, oh, you. sorry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mm -hmm. I was seeking clarity, Madam Speaker, on the, on the section that you read, where, where you were saying that the Parliament could amend the rules. I would just like you to, to read that section again for me so I, can, I didn't hear it correctly or properly. And I have a follow-up question once you read it. I indicated that some of the discussions we have had underscore the need for constant assessment of the legislations with a view to amending where we as a parliament think necessary it is also critical for us to look at the standing orders, have the committee meet and undertake a comprehensive review of these standing orders with a view to making the suggested amendments for debate in the House and approval by the House so that it enhances the effectiveness, the efficiency of the written rules that govern us here in the parliament and guides the proceedings of this chamber.